Welcome to Red, White, and Blue. From the right, I'm Gary Polland. And from the left, I'm David Jones. Tonight, we welcome Professor Stephen Kleinberg of the Department of Sociology of Rice University, but also the head of the Institute for Urban Research at Rice, which is a new institute that is now the home of the Houston Survey. That's right, and, and more than I'm, I'm, I'm co-head, because we're oh, co-head. Know, bringing together a bunch of different research uh, at Rice and building a, a, a much greater sense of, of research and the use of that research to inform and inspire the communities in which it's based to, to build Houston and understand this extraordinary city. Well, if you're able to inform and inspire David today, you will have accomplished a lot. <laughs> well, David? give us a description well, of, the survey, of the survey's methods. And, of course, it's been 29 years, so I'm sure you've got it down uh, <laughs> Uh, so so. It's, it's, it's a representative random sample of Harris County residents reached by random telephone numbers, which is getting more problematic these days. And we'll, we can touch on that in a, in a little while if you want. But, but reaching a, a sample of all of us, asking identical questions over these 29 years, how do you see the world? What's happening in your life? And then we have sat back and watched the world change. Houston has been in major at the center of the fundamental transformations of American society. This is a city where... That it is a window into understanding the, the America, uh, the transformations that are, have made the 21st century a different place than most of us thought it would be 15 years ago. Yeah, we thought ago. Houston was a better place than most places in America. <laughs> well, you have, you have, maybe you have some, <laughs> see, maybe, maybe you have some lessons uh, or some instructions to the Census Bureau because we learned recently that there's a, a fall off in the response to the census. Texas, Florida, California, Arizona, no surprise there, mm -hmm. um, are in, at risk of losing congressional seats or not gaining the numbers that they once were thought to, to gain. So why don't you... Tremendous challenge of, of you know, with, with so many immigrants and with so they many... They talk to you, though, and they don't talk to the census. What's the problem? Well, some don't talk to us either. And, and, <laughs> but but uh, we're in the midst of a serious sort of anti-immigrant fervor that is not surprising but is powerful and real. We have just saw what happened in Arizona. And... Government, we come to, come to Latinos and say, I'm from the government and you can trust me. Tell me how many people are here. Tell me where you... It's, it's not surprising that it's enormously difficult. It is critical to get as full and accurate account as we possibly can. Uh, your reading of, uh, of the concerns about uh, illegal immigration in the country, do you think they would be alleviated based on your studies if uh, the United States actually got control of its borders? There's, what's so interesting is that there is real consensus about what is needed. For, we have a deeply dysfunctional immigration policy right now. We have no control. We have 12 million illegal immigrants, illegal immigrants because we do not allow enough people to come here legally to do the jobs that we desperately need to have done in this society by people who desperately need to do them. And, 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 and they are cut, left in the shadows. They can be cheated out of their wages. Women can be raped and attacked. They're afraid to go to the police. Uh, young kids in schools are, are afraid they're going to come home and their, and their parents will have been rounded up for, at, at, at Shipley Donuts. Terrible system. And we all know what is needed. It's a comprehensive reform that includes control of the borders and a pathway to legal status and, and a foolproof way of checking who's here legally and, and, a, and a, worker per, uh, a temporary worker permit for those that, that can come in. So now we have where they can come in, but they can't go out. They can't ever go home because of the, the nature of our border. So, so what, are your, what, are your, what do your findings say as you are interviewing um, Latino uh, surveyed uh, people uh, whenever you mouth the words, uh, remember the Alamo? Uh, or is it now going to be, remember Arizona? Yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you, next the, year, what would you... What would you the what, surveys show, not surprisingly, a deep ambivalence. We are a nation of immigrants. We know that immigration has always been a major source of, of renewed strength for this country. Every time that there have been large numbers of immigrants in our midst, we have been uncomfortable about it. We didn't like it when the Greeks and the Italians and the Poles were here. We didn't like it when the Irish came, of course. We didn't like it when the Germans settled in New Brownfields and were speaking a strange language. So that ambivalence is there in our survey. So some people want are more in support of a fence to stop all illegal immigration before. They are, they, they are less likely to say that the large number of, new, of illegal immigrants coming to Houston is a serious problem for the city. That, well, that's the, gone the down, message so. that you're, we're, I'm asking you to give, uh, you know, my chairman of the Know Nothing Party here is whether or not this is good for the Republicans to have Arizona-like legislation. Is this, is this the way you build a governing coalition? Yeah, the, the Republican Party, as, as we know, is, is facing a... Well, both parties are. I mean, who has the right responses to this extraordinary set of changes? But the Republican Party has a, a base that is very much at the core of this anxiety about all this new immigration that's coming in here. And, all the, and, and it's important to realize, for example, in Harris County, Texas, in 1980, not that long ago, 63 percent of the population of Harris County was Anglo. Today, it's less than 35 percent. 
That's a big change. Where the very people small go? Time. They, they just stopped coming. The great growth of Houston during the oil boom was Anglos pouring into Houston during the 60s and 70s. After 1982, with the oil boom collapse, the Anglo population stopped growing, and all the growth of Houston in the last 25 years has been non-Anglo growth. So there so, is no majority anymore. So there's there. no majority, and uh, I tell people you've got to be gentle with Anglos. It's not surprising that people are, are not entirely comfortable with this transformation. So, well, so David, the, the, David the likes, and we're talking about this, the immigration issue, but David likes to say that uh, say the Republicans are anti legal immigration, which I don't find to be the case. I don't know what your survey showed. Do you think the kind of solution that you just mentioned, which is a comprehensive plan where we actually do control the borders and figure out who's here, which I think, yeah. as you said, is absolutely critical. People can't be, right. you can't have 12 right. million people living in yeah. the shadows. We that know makes who's no here sense. And, and, Do you think yeah. that's something that can actually work? Well, what's interesting, I think, is that when you, when you go to Republican or to Democratic lawmakers and you, pre- and you present that, that coherent integrated process, almost everybody says, yes, that's the solution. We just can't get there in our politics. And a lot of that has to do with, a, with a, all that political energy on the far right in the Tea Party movement, where one part of that unmistakably is, I want my country back. I don't like all these well, changes. We had, we had immigration uh, reform before. We were supposed to get control right. of the borders right. before. Was it 10, 15, 20 years ago? And, of course, the government, like so many promises, did not keep right. that promise. So I guess it's fair to say why people would say, I don't trust the government to deliver yeah. on that part of the uh, comprehensive program. Well, we've learned from those mistakes. I mean, the great problem in, in, with IRCA in 1986 was that we, ne- we never had a foolproof system of checking whether or not people were here legally. That is now... In, you know, eminently possible. Uh, it does force uh, Democrats and libertarians to be willing to say, okay, everyone needs to have some kind of an identity that, that indicates it. But we can do that in a way that's foolproof. Now we have the most uh, you know, porous kind of system imaginable. We know how to do this, and we can do it, and, it's, and we need to do it, but politically, partly because of all that, that and, and, and as I say, back to the Republican issues, the Republican Party has got to get that base with them, but also has to stop alienating Latinos. So what are the signs of long-term What future. are the signs of economic anxieties, which certainly contribute to the notion that our country is being taken over by uh, outsiders and Ill- illegal immigration, and we can't spend any money to do anything about it? Uh, are there signs in the survey that shows that Houstonians are less comfortable about issues such as Gary's raising simply because their pocketbooks are shrinking? Yeah, well, I think the most... The, 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 I do the survey every year. I keep thinking, okay, that's enough. I've done this long enough. But every year there's something surprising and interesting. And the surprise this year was we've asked people for 29 years, how have you been doing financially over the last three or four years? Better, about the same or worse? How do you think you'll be doing three or four years down the the road? 20% only today said they've been doing better in the last three or four years. That's lower than it has ever been in 29 years. At the depths of the recession in 1986-87, it fell to 31%. 20% today, 48% say they've been doing worse. That, that, and so you know, there are macroeconomic indicators. The Dow Jones is over 11,000 again. People are, are beginning to spend money, but it has not had any impact on the, on the lives of ordinary Houstonians. Another example is we said, uh, did you have any difficulty in the last 12 months buying the groceries to feed, to feed your family? 25% said they had difficulty. And that would be reflective in what some people say the true unemployment rate, which is over 20%, right, right. which includes those who have discouraged and given up search, searching for work. And persistent unemployment is a serious economic There's problem. deep anxiety for and, everybody. And, and deep pessimism about, about the future. We said that, uh, thinking about the standard of living that you have or expect to have, is it higher about the same or lower than your parents' standard of living? The percent saying it's higher than my parents' standard dropped from 72% to 50%. From two years ago. To, to, so, the, so the corrective to so illegal worry, immigration uh, might be, sadly, uh, a loss of national prosperity here. I mean, after all, it is our disposable income that we have, our wealth that we have, that attracts people from below the Rio Grande to come here. We're the demand for well, the, the, the housekeepers and the yard people. And, the, and, we, and ben- we benefit enormously. We, and if we stop those. going out to restaurants because we're losing income, We'll, we'll solve the immigration problem because they won't be here. And, and, and by the way, but that's why illegal immigration has gone down, exactly David, is right. because the uh, yeah. unemployment yeah. Uh, in and, the country has gone up and there's less disposable and, income. And, so and, David and construction got it. is slowed. Yeah. So we should be Absolutely. happy. We should be happy. We're a wealthy country. We should no, be happy that there are people slowed. here. It yeah. actually was yeah. better. It's people were happier, design. actually. Yeah. Your survey showed people were happier when the economy was doing well, better yeah. and illegal immigration actually was pretty high, even though that's not the way to bring people into the country. Right. 
And there yeah. is a way we could do it, actually, if we wanted to. But and let's illegal move. immigrants means that they are working in the shadows. It means that they are paid right. under minimum wage. It means that the jobs that would be here for for high school graduates who are not going on to college, those jobs are, are dried up because they are going to the to, to the illegal immigrants. Who I want to talk to you. Go back to uh, David's talk about anxieties. I want to talk about how the anxieties that the public have translates into politi politics and who gains and who doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, surveys indicate, of course, okay, that yeah. the anxieties <laughs> about government mean that the Republicans are now going to benefit because the Republicans are more seen as the uh, party that's more hostile to government than, than the Democrats who want to give us everything. There's more resistance to government, government programs. That's right. So Just what does that mean? What does that mean in terms of November elections, for example? Where the, the Republicans various, have yeah. hopes. They have hopes. Uh, on the other hand, as, as you and I have talked about before, uh, you can't win on the basis of just the party of no. You've got to have Republican solutions to perceived serious problems that, that Americans Americans are confronting. And, and, and at the same time, given the economic insecurities, you go after the incumbents and you, you say, let's change and, and switch. It's hard to know. What, you know, there are signs that things are beginning to turn around. Uh, this, there, there was growing resistance to the health care to federal health insurance to cover the medical expenses of all Americans has gone down, but we did the surveys in February and early March. That health care reform has now been passed. As people begin to see what that is, they may begin to feel like this is Actually, the surveys post-Obamacare uh, passing show that it continues to be very It has popular. not returned. Yeah, that's right. That's and, but but it's, uh, things are uh, volatile out there, as we know. It's well, still, and there are other issues. So, yeah. so for Republicans to win in November, your advice is be the party of yes. Be the party of yes. And uh, and and be the party that 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 speaks to the real issues facing the country and isn't just uh, seen as as captive of, of, the, of the very far right. Seems to me to be a real danger. For, for so put country. your other hat on. What's the what's the new strategic narrative for the let's say our, our our former mayor who's running for governor of Texas who is presently you know within the margin of error almost in, uh, in as he opposes Rick Perry the the governor. What's his what does he say? I think for Texas, the central issue is the future. Are we making the investments that will ensure Texas's success in a new economy where education has become the critical determinant of success, where overwhelmingly the young people in Texas, the people who will be the citizens and workers and voters and, and taxpayers of Texas and Houston in the 21st century are disproportionately non-Anglo, the groups least well served by the educational systems, dropping out of high school, will we make the investments to ensure that Texas and Houston are positioned for success in the knowledge economy of the 21st century? This city and state can be beautifully positioned with a young bilingual workforce ready to lead Houston and Texas in this global economy, or it can become a major liability reducing rather than enhancing our competitiveness. Well, so, I, so think I, he, think, I think Bill I think, White is reading your survey. I think White he's, is, is right on that. And I think, I think Perry has got to have an answer to... White is talking about Houston's we've had a million Texas dropouts. Texas okay right now. Is it making the investments? So what's your vision for the future? What are you going to do to make sure Texas is ready to compete in the 21st century of a very competitive world, which, of course, we, we mentioned yes. also before. Yes. You know, just for example, solar energy, solar panels mm -hmm. uh, in, mm -hmm. the, in that field, and, and that's going to be yeah. growing. And for Texas to continue to be, and Houston to be, the center of energy in the world, don't you think Houston needs to find a way to make an investment so we're doing cutting-edge research and, and hopefully bringing in manufacturing so we can be involved with alternative fuels? Absolutely. Yeah, the, I mean, the big employers in Houston during the oil boom was Hughes Tool Company, Cameron Ironworks. Those good blue-collar jobs have disappeared we need to restore them with the new, the new kind of energy systems that are the, the 21st century. This is, a, this is the energy capital of the world only because it's the oil and gas capital of the world. Can it remain the energy capital that requires well, investments in a, in a, in a world future? with less oil uh, as the percentage of energy? That's a fascinating question. Exactly. Exactly. As, the, uh, as we know, the Republican Party has uh, this other constituency in it, and it's the social issues constituency. Yes. Uh, what do you see in your surveys about our... our Residents, uh, as to how they're, whether or not they are lining up uh -huh. in the yeah. way that the Republicans yeah. would like to have them line up on such things as gay rights, abortion, and uh, doing right. things about yeah. crime. Well, I think one of the most fascinating things in our survey is we've asked for over 25 years identical questions about gay rights and identical questions about abortion rights. Do you think abortion is morally wrong? Is it morally acceptable? Do you think uh, homosexuality is something people choose or something they cannot change? In favor of some... every question about uh, abortion rights has stayed unchanged. 
over all these years. And there is this interesting group of about 20% of Houstonians who say, I believe abortion is morally wrong, but I'm opposed to a law that would make it more difficult for a woman to obtain an abortion, which makes us a pro- more pro- of a progressive city than a traditionalistic city. But on every question asked about gay rights, there has been systematic, continuing increase in, su- in acceptance and support tied into the belief increasingly that homosexuality is not something people choose, but something they cannot change, and tied into the question that said, do you have a personal friend who's gay or lesbian? And the number who said yes went from 40 to, to 58 percent. And, and so a question, for example, are you in favor or opposed to allowing homosexuals to legally adopt children? Only 19 percent of Houstonians in 1991 were in favor. Then it went to 20, 25, 30, 35, 38, 49, 52 percent in the survey completed last month saying I'm in favor of allowing homosexuals. Which would account, I guess, for the fact that when uh, Anise Parker runs for mayor, that her her sexual orientation, when some tried to make it an issue, it was fell it flat as a pancake. Exactly. exactly. It just didn't make any difference. Right. And if we went back to 1991, I bet, based on your survey, it would have been a huge issue. And, and it was, as we may recall. I mean, the issue is like that. It's fascinating. Okay. Yes. You mentioned in your survey, you, you survey on term limits. City of Houston has term limits. There's an op-ed right. piece in the Chronicle Sunday by uh, by David Minsberg yes. suggesting we need term limits for Republican county officials because he never mentioned the Democrats, David. <laughs> Let's talk about term limits. Did you think your survey tell you do people support the concept of term limits still? Well, we asked the idea? question this year uh, at the request of several people. Uh, to, to, when we ask people about are you in favor of, of getting rid of the term limits, people say no, they like the term limits. So okay. we asked the question this year. If it was going to be changed, which would you prefer? And it was just clear, overwhelming majority saying they would prefer two four-year terms to three three-year terms. So voting less, but also four-year terms makes a whole lot more sense than two-year terms in terms of the Because you're always ability running to go. Yeah, two-year that's terms. Right. That's right. Okay, so, that's interesting. So, so do you, and you think there's support to extend term limits then based on that? So if, if that's the choice, that's right. Yeah, that's, David, that's interesting. Yeah. I guess, so I guess I, well, I, I, the Democrats are going to have to work hard to craft a bill that says only Republicans have term limits that's in the county. Bit that'll be <laughs> interesting how they do that, but nice, I don't know. What a nice thought. <laughs> so how, do, how close do we line up, or, or what, and what sizable portion is there in this uh, survey that you've done to the Tea Party crowd? It, it, and now, let me just give you three uh, findings from the recent New York Times mm-hmm. poll about uh, the Tea Party and what they are all about. Six, only 6% six of the Tea Party uh, crowd say that the economy is, is good. Mm-hmm. 76%, 76% of the Tea Party crowd surveyed sh- say that the Fed should reduce the deficit rather than spend on jobs. And 82% say that illegal, illegal immigration is a serious problem. Right. Right. So how, do, how close are we to being a Tea Party city? Not very close. Uh, certainly there are elements there of anxiety and insecurity on and, and the economy. And so, but... Uh, the Tea Party is not, it, no one thinks the Tea Party is representative of the, of the American population as a whole. It is, on the other hand, there's a big difference between pol- public opinion, which is what we measure in the privacy of people's homes, how do you see the world, and politically effective opinion. And the political energy is on the far right. And that's where I think that the Republican Party is in a bind because it, it, it can't move toward reaching out to other, these other communities uh, at the risk of, of alienating that base. But, but, uh, there are elements where you've seen growing anxiety about, about government spending, growing concern about the economy, but uh, uh, ambivalence and not clear negative attitudes toward, toward, uh, toward ethnic diversity. Houstonians are becoming more comfortable with that diversity. Young people overwhelmingly more comfortable than older people, both about gay rights and about uh, a question, for example, that said, do, uh, do you think the increasing ethnic diversity in Houston brought about by immigration will eventually become a source of great strength for the city or a growing problem for the city? And young people are much more likely to say a source of great strength. But we've also watched all of us moving toward increasingly saying a source of great strength. That Based acceptance of the diversity, I think, is a very important piece of what you see in Houston and you don't yet see in the uh, in the Tea Party. Well, based on your survey and what it tells you about the city of Houston, where it's at in 2010, is there another major city in the world you would compare Houston to in terms of uh, how we operate and our attitudes? Well, we are, at the, as I said at the beginning, I think, at the, at the center of these new transformations. But so is Los Angeles, so is New York, Chicago to some degree. Houston is especially an interesting city. I mean, it's a city that has undergone these transformations much more rapidly, much more suddenly. I mean, we were an Anglo city. We were a biracial southern city dominated by white men throughout our entire history. Now one of the most ethnically diverse cities in the country. Uh, but the, the other thing that's so interesting is with all this ne- negativity and anxiety, 
uh, and, we, and people complained in our surveys about traffic and pollution and crime. And then we said, how would you rate the Houston area in general as a place to live? It's a wonderful place to live. 83% said excellent or good, higher than ever before. So despite this economic anxiety and concerns that people are expressing, that sense that this is a great city. And this is a, and I think our great strength in Houston is the people who live here, who believe in the city, who want to see it succeed, who are prepared to think in new ways about what do we need to do to position Houston for success in the 21st century. All right, now you also talked about uh, law enforcement and the issues there. Uh, what did you find in the attitudes of the residents of the city of Houston about spending more money on jails? Interesting, yeah, and a variety of different questions. We asked about, about uh, people in possession of small amounts of illegal, illegal drugs should be fined rather than sent to jail. Overwhelmingly, people said yes. And a question that was really the surprise was we said a question we last asked back in the 1990s. It said, uh, which would be the best solution for in, in dealing with crime, spending large sums of money to send criminals to prison and keep them there a long time, or spending the same money to reduce poverty and keep young people in school? And it jumped from 50 to 79% saying spend the money on school, schools and, and poverty. Which reflects your, 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 what, everything you've read about education being the key for the future and, and finding out ways to solve the dropout problem, for example. Exactly. Uh, and and people sure realize that that's people. the connection. Your yeah. colleague Bob yeah, Stein, I remember, exactly had a survey from uh, 2008, and part of that survey backed up uh, data uh, from a bond issue where black African American voters had turned down a bond issue where a jail was to be built. So the message that you get from the survey is you shouldn't be considering putting jails on a ballot anytime soon. Right. I mean, depending on how it's presented and, and, and what the arguments are. But, but uh, that recognition of the amount of money that we are spending on jails and the, amount, and the percentage of our population that is, that is incarcerated compared with uh, th that same money being spent in other, and, and the number of people who are in jail for crimes that are not dangerous crimes that threaten the rest of us and do doesn't make us more safe to lock these people up. And then the whole question about what happens to them when they come out. I mean, so there's a growing recognition across the board, and it's interesting to see it in the general public as well, that says this is not the most intelligent way to spend our public money. Yeah, and that tells you, I guess, why uh, jail bond issues have failed recently. The voters don't want them to spend right. that money. They that's say, right. let's be smarter on yeah. how we incarcerate and, and people. And that's a shift from, what, from, from the sort of... Lock them up you know, attitude. Right. Interesting. But if yeah. we get into a, a, a second serious financial crisis, uh, then... Even at the city budget level, things are going to have to be reshaped uh, to reflect the continuing drop in uh, sales tax revenue and the like. Yes. Can you can you see it in our future that I, we will have a population, of, of especially of those that you've surveyed, that will be receptive to taxes in order to make changes in our yeah. budget position? You yeah. know, we do have to pay taxes interest on very, the debt. Well, you know, taxes are very hard to sell to people yeah, when, their David, economy, David, when their incomes yes. are going down. Yeah, yeah. Right, because they're, they're making sacrifices, right. so government has to, too. And isn't it, right. don't you think it's also true, there's plenty of money the government has, state government, local government, the schools, they have plenty of money, it's how you spend it. We have to take a look at, maybe we have to look at how we pay pensions, that public right, pensions right. can't be so much more generous than the private sector, uh, that we need to get more efficient and more effective in how government operates, that some of the things the government does, right. maybe the government shouldn't yeah. be doing. I mean, those are right. all things... And there are unfunded can, mandates that force us to spend money on absolutely, things Absolutely, you know, all right. the time. And, and does right. that make sense in, in, in a time when money right. is tighter? Right. David's answer, of course, always as a Democrat, is we need to raise taxes on the rich. Of course, we could take 100% of the rich's income, uh, uh, Dr. Kleinberg, yeah, as you yeah. know, <laughs> and fund government, what, for three weeks? Something <laughs> yeah. like that. Gary's just, just, afraid, Gary's just afraid that I want to raise taxes on the rich who live in Bel Air. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I mean, one of the reasons for the, for the growing inequalities in America, which we all have to admit is, is serious and long, is I think the greatest political challenge of our time. How do we restore the equalizing institutions that used to ensure that all Americans shared in the prosperity of the country? We have more inequality in this country than any country in Europe, partly because of the exacerbation basin of the basic inequalities that are going on across the board with tax systems that cut taxes on the rich instead of and instead of recognizing that those are the people who were making out very, very well during this well, economy. I mean, part of that is and needed to support the, the, the ratio between what CEOs were making and workers were making has just gone way off exactly, the charts. Exactly, exactly. That's, that, that's, and that's, legitimate, times, that's exactly. a legitimate yeah. concern. Right. And one of the biggest pieces of legislation to address inequality was this national health legislation. Yes, and, that's and, true. And, and of course, that's a, a big first piece of, serious a big effort in, tw in 30 years to say, wait a minute, we wealthy um, Houstonians have access to the best education in the world. 
we have the highest percentage of children without health insurance of any major city in America. And that inequality. So, so that's, that's, I think historians are going to recognize this was a serious effort to address the inequality. Yeah, unfortunately, hand, happy it was not a good plan. I mean, they won't really deal with the problem. In fact, well, it exasperates the problem, as you know. And the answer, well, Obamacare, sure. if left to its own <laughs> devices, doctor, will be rationing. That's where we'll head, rationing. Well, we ration now on the basis of who's got insurance and what well, is insurance going to Well, we, no, we ration by making people wait. I mean, but yeah, it, it's well. going to get worse, not better. There were better well, ideas. We'll we even had them on our show. Doctors come <laughs> right. in and had interesting. Oh, yeah, proposals yeah. uh, from the universities. It's incredibly but difficult. To, uh, the, the, uh, the smart people who had ideas of how to reform medical care were not listening. You know, to. You're, you know you're winning when the Republicans are still screaming about health care. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Steve Planberg, for oh, being with us. Half hour is gone already. Yes. It was great fun. <laughs> <laughs> and you can view a follow-up discussion of tonight's show by going to HoustonPBS.org. Click on Red, White, and View, th- view there. Uh, so check that out, okay. view, view. And, uh, view <laughs> and until next time, send that census uh, form in and get active. Yeah, the government will not pick you up, and it's important. <laughs> <laughs>